The James Bond games haven't had much luck recently. Despite the remake of GoldenEye being pretty good, the rest of the recent James Bond games have been lacking. Bloodstone was a good idea, but was made by a developer who had no idea how to make a good third person action game, and 007 Legends is such an embarrassment that it has potentially sunk the entire James Bond video game franchise. In an attempt to restore my faith in the James Bond games, I decided to try out the Quantum of Solace game on the Xbox 360. Sure, the film was average at best, but the game was made by Treyarch, the developer who in the same year released Call of Duty World at War, which I really liked. So, did Treyarch use their FPS experience to make a great game, or does Quantum of Solace deserve to be thrown in the fire next to 007 Legends? Let's check it out. The story of the game comes from both Quantum of Solace and Casino Royale. I won't go into what the actual story is, as you should probably have watched the films if you want to play this game. As a retelling of the films though, this game does a terrible job. The first few levels you play are based off Quantum of Solace, but for no reason the game suddenly jumps to the beginning of Casino Royale and then you play through that film. After getting to the end of Casino Royale, the game then jumps back to Quantum of Solace where you play one last level based on the end of that film. I have no problem having a game based on both Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace as there was no Casino Royale game and the stories are connected, but there was no reason to not have the levels go in chronological order. It makes it impossible to get sucked into the story, which isn't helped by the cutscenes. It's really odd to see cutscenes in the 360 game that don't use the in-game graphics, especially because the graphics in the cutscenes look awful. Another complaint I have with how the story is handled is where the levels themselves take place within the films. There are a few levels in the game that are technically part of the film's story, but wasn't parts of the film at all. For example, the game starts in between Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace, where James Bond is capturing Mr. White. You also play a level where it turns out in Casino Royale, before Bond is tortured, he escapes for a short time only to get captured again. It might seem like doing levels like this provides extra insight into film offence that you wouldn't have got otherwise, but instead it makes the levels feel disconnected from the film's story. Look at this footage of the game, could you tell me what part of the films this comes from, or even what film it's from? The main reason someone buys a game based on a film is to relive the cool moments from those films, and this is something that Quantum of Solace misses completely. The game is a first person shooter for the most part. You can play the whole game in first person, but if you hit the A button while near cover, you snap right to it and switch to third person. It's an interesting idea and it is nice being given the option to either take cover in first person like in Call of Duty or to take cover in third person like Gears of War. What makes it bad is how the enemy AI is designed. Taking cover means that the enemy bullets can't hit you unless the enemy flanks you, which means to try and make the game challenging the developers made it so the enemies fire at you relentlessly, there's a large amount of them and you can only take minimal damage before dying, even on normal difficulty. It forces you to use the third person cover system and being tactical rarely helps you to take out enemies. You just have to sit behind cover, wait for someone to pop out their head and then shoot at them. It becomes boring very fast and the combat isn't helped by the fact that the game has stiff controls so nothing you do feels natural. Also, for whatever reason, gunfights mostly come down to shooting explosive barrels which are scattered throughout levels. With how many enemies there are, it becomes necessary to shoot at any explosives you see, but it's odd just how many of them there are in every single gunfight. Even with the explosions, the gunfights overall are just a chore to play. As Quantum of Solace is a James Bond game, you would expect all the different gameplay styles that you'd normally find in a James Bond game. Unfortunately, they aren't present and the spy parts of the game are almost non-existent. There are certain parts of the level where you can be stealthy by taking enemies down silently, but these sections don't work well. The enemy's AI isn't different from what it normally is in these parts, so you make one small mistake and you're spotted and straight back into a big gunfight. I never managed to get through an area without being seen and it wasn't enjoyable trying to. Remember how James Bond is also known for having gadgets? Well apparently Treyarch doesn't as this game features none of them. In their defence, the newer Bond films haven't focused on gadgets as much, but even 007 Legends had the smartphone, this game has nothing. There are times where you have to unlock doors which involves pressing the D-pad in the right direction at the right time to get the door's code. They're a small part of the gameplay but they are still annoying as there's no skill or puzzle element to them, it's just reflex which doesn't really make much sense and doesn't make them fun. 
you do find cell phones throughout levels which give you extra information on the mission you're on, but they're really just collectibles with no real purpose. Another type of gameplay that's missing from this game are driving levels. I wasn't impressed by the driving levels in Bloodstone or Legends, but I still like the fact that they were included. They didn't even try with the driving levels in Quantum of Solace. You even get taunted by the fact there's no driving, as there is a first person cutscene of Bond driving the forklift from the start of Casino Royale. Why didn't they let the player drive the forklift? That would have been really cool. It's strange that there's no driving still, as Treyarch always includes driving of some sort in all their Call of Duty games, but for some reason they left it out here. The level design of Quantum of Solace is surprisingly appalling. You have an objective indicator at the top of the screen to tell you where to go, but I still managed to be lost or confused about what I was meant to do at certain points. The worst time was at the very end of the game where you're told you have to escape and you're given a time limit. However, the indicator doesn't point you in the right direction, and you do have a map which points where you have to go, but the map wasn't used for at all. After dying many times, I eventually found out you're meant to run off a ledge to activate the cutscene. Maybe I'm just bad at games, but these problems shouldn't happen in a linear FPS like this. For some reason, throughout the levels, you also have to jump across gaps. It doesn't sound too bad, but the jumping is stiff and awkward, so you'll likely miss jumps and be instantly killed. I found myself being instantly killed a lot in the game, as it likes to throw stuff at you and expects you to react in time when you just can't. The biggest example of this is at the start of one level where you're walking along only to have a flaming car come at you out of nowhere with no indication it's coming and the game expects you to avoid it. The checkpoint system is generous so it's not frustrating all the times you instantly get killed but it does mean that dying doesn't matter which destroys any tension the game can have. I know by this point you know that I don't like this game but I have one more major complaint I need to get out there, how the game runs. I never really notice or care about frame rates when it comes to video games, but the low and inconsistent frame rate in this game is distracting. Whenever there's an explosion or a lot happening on screen, the frame rate drops, which takes a lot away from the big moments. This game was made using the same engine as Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, and it ran fine in that game. Treyarch also used this engine for Call of Duty World of War, which ran without any frame rate issues, so what happened with Quantum of Solace? I would guess that Quantum of Solace has these problems because it was rushed, but it really is no excuse. It needs to be mentioned that this game has very little content. It took me under 4 hours to beat the main story, and with this being an older 360 game, it's almost impossible to play the online multiplayer. Maybe it was good when it was first released, but you can't play it now, so it doesn't matter. Quantum of Solace on the Xbox 360 is a disappointing Bond game and a bad game overall. It focuses on action more than it should have done, which might have worked if the game itself was better designed. It fails as a film game due to the confusing story choices, and without Daniel Craig's likeness in the game, you wouldn't probably be able to tell that it was a Bond game at all. As mentioned, it seems like this game was just rushed, which is a shame, as a Bond game built using the Modern Warfare engine sounded promising. I can't decide if it's better or worse than 007 Legends, as while that game was frustrating to play due to how much potential it had, I found my time with Quantum of Solace to be more joyless. My score is 3.0 out of 10. While not the most offensively bad game I've ever played, Quantum of Solace lacks anything to make it a quality James Bond video game.